Hi everyone, welcome to this video. So I've been immersed in the Apple ecosystem for a while now, and I have some thoughts to share, including the hardware, software, integration, and some personal critiques I've made about what I think would make this better. Let's start off with these, the AirPods. These are probably the most sold Apple product I've ever seen. These are all over the place. And they're the number one easy flex. <laughs> That's the way to describe them. Um, let's see. These sound pretty good. Overall, they aren't my favorite headphones. These are a little bit cheaper made than I would like them to be. Especially for someone with the build quality of Apple. That just seems a little weird. <laughs> but these are a surprisingly good price. I think these are $130 at the time of filming USD right now. And this is the thing that really I don't like about these. Like, a deal breaker. These don't fit in my ears whatsoever. So, I'm just gonna... So, for some reason, this fits in my ear better. Like, upside down like this. Like, it fits fine like this. But if you try and, like, put them in regularly, they hurt and they fall out. It's just not a good experience. So, if you are considering buying these, I would recommend trying someone else's first. If they fit in your ears, I recommend these. But if they don't, just don't bother with these AirPods at all. This is the Apple Watch. It is great. <laughs> There's a couple of reasons why. Alright, first of all, it feels great. This aluminum feels pretty nice. Obviously, that's I've already said it feels great. And it just doesn't look cheaply made in any way. Except for my poorly applied screen protector, you can't really tell in the video. Anyway, second off, this has all the features and functions you would ever need to watch to do. Like, this has messages, camera, music, Bluetooth. I've never used any of them. Alright, and this is where it gets a little bit better. This is why I recommend this. The price. It is spot on for something like this. This is $160 brand new. The reason why this is so good is because these are used like 175, but you can buy them new for 160. So this just feels a lot better than any other $100, $150 watch I've ever felt. The only place where I would improve is if it had a better screen, but this was fixed with the newer models, so I guess I can't complain. <laughs> so if you have extra money to spend on this watch, go with the Series 4. It is slightly better than the Series 3 that I have here. Anyway, this is a great watch and I highly recommend it. Next video. This is the iPhone. I have the iPhone XS here, and this is what I would recommend if I were to buy an iPhone in this price category. This is around 450 bucks, And it's personal. It really depends on who you are, what you like in a phone. And so this is where it gets kind of more complicated because this is, I'm just going to be talking my personal opinion. This is your decision to, whether you like it or not, it's highly subjective. You know, let's get into it. What I like about this phone is the build quality. This is great. It is spot on with this. I think this is stainless steel on the sides. Nice glass on the back. It's a little scratchy. I guess you could say it's it scratches really easy, a lot easier than other Android glass like Gorilla Glass 6. And the speed is also great. I love the A12 processor. It does whatever I want it to do and more. And also iOS 14, I know it hasn't officially launched yet, but the developer beta that I've had on this phone for a while they're trying to make it more like Android, and I love it. <laughs> this is personal preference, once again. This is, yeah, this is subjective. This is me. I like it because of this the new widgets thing. That's nice to have. The app drawer, and you can set your default browser and messages app. Thank you. I've been wanting this for so long. <laughs> this is, the thing I don't like about it is, it's way too expensive for what it is. This is a good phone. But it's still two years old. And the the cheapest I could find this is four hundred and fifty bucks. 
and it has a cracked camera lens. You can't really see that, but it's cracked. It's okay, but it's personal preference. If you like iPhones and iOS, this is a great phone and I highly recommend it. But if you're more of an Android type of guy, either download iOS 14 beta or just don't buy an iPhone. iPads, really? Just don't buy one. If you want an iOS device, buy an iPhone. And if you want a computer, a mobile computer, buy a MacBook. I don't see the point in iPads. I never bought one. If you have a point, if you know why that they're so popular, please feel free to leave a comment. I don't understand them. So I can't give my information. I never bought one. All right. The MacBook. Ooh. Don't bother. I bought a MacBook, a 2014 MacBook Air. That's a little old, yes. They're expensive. I don't want to pay for one that I don't need. They're too expensive. And that's not even the worst part. Okay. They're built great, I will say that. They feel really nice to hold, and they're just great laptops physically. But, well, it's, they're not fast. <laughs> they're just... They tell you not to use Chrome. Is it that hard to run? And they tell you not to use non-Apple authorized apps or whatever. Why? <laughs> it's just not fast enough. And they claim it has an i5, but it's not a regular i5. They did something to it to make it not near as fast as some of the similar i5 systems I've tested. Alright, next. The upgradability is pretty much zero. Everything's soldered that you would ever want to upgrade, except the SSD, and it's some proprietary thing I've paid Apple like $200 to upgrade. Not worth it. So just buy the model you need and don't ever plan on upgrades. They aren't going to happen. Alright, this is where it gets even worse for the MacBook. I used this for like a week, it was fine, it was usable, and then the keyboard stopped working for no reason, and I'm sure this is just my model, This not every 2014 MacBook keyboard is broke, but then I was like, alright, I guess fine, plug in an external keyboard, then the trackpad broke, a little weird, then the fans just like, totally messed up, and they don't work right anymore either, and then then after that it just stopped responding and got super slow so I just sold it for 50 bucks and moved on with my day took a loss I don't like MacBooks they're too slow for what I do which isn't even that hard I do most of the things I do are on the internet if I can't use Chrome what's the point of buying a $400 computer if you can't use Chrome don't buy a MacBook unless you really want to look cool with that glowing Apple logo Mac desktops. It somehow gets worse. <laughs> I didn't buy one either because my Windows machine isn't worth enough to buy even a usable Mac desktop. Like, pretty much the minimum usable computer I could find is a first gen i7. It works, but it was $450. <laughs> that's not even far off. Like, that's regular. $680 for a regular, decent machine that I would never pay that much for. I couldn't get enough for my Windows machine anyway to buy one, so I just didn't buy a Mac desktop and say, well, it's easier just to build a Windows desktop and that's way better for the same price. So, Macs in general just don't do it for me. If you have reasons why you like them, please feel free to tell me. I don't agree with them. All right, the recap now. This, I'm kind of just going through what I would recommend, what I wouldn't. All right, so with the AirPods, if they fit properly in your ears, I would recommend them. They sound good and they feel pretty decent for how much they cost, but they don't fit in my ears. Just make sure to test them before you buy them. And if they fit, then they're great headphones. And then the Apple Watch, <laughs> I don't care who you are, this is great. And I would buy one, again, 
if I needed a new one, I would definitely buy another one. I would not go to Samsung, even though I love the Active. I love the Active line of watches, but the Apple Watches are just better. The iPhone XS, it's a little pricey, even used, but overall, this thing's pretty good. And if you like iOS or you are willing to learn iOS, I like it and I would recommend it. iPads, why? <laughs> Just don't buy an iPad. And then MacBook, if you can find a good deal and you don't do more than web browsing, if everything you do is in Safari, I guess you could buy a MacBook. I wouldn't, but you could. Don't buy Mac desktops. Just don't. Build your own. Or if you don't like that, buy a pre-built. Windows isn't that bad. <laughs> Just don't spend that much on a Mac desktop. Software integration with all of this hardware is great. Like, if I were to open up the control battery center on my iPhone XS, you can't really see this. It's the middle widget right there. I'll open up my uh, AirPods and boom, it'll tell me the battery life of my phone watch, airpods, and airpods case. Thank you. Why don't more people do this? It just... The reason why people like Apple products, in my opinion, is because they just work. Everything just works together seamlessly. And this is why I think the Apple ecosystem is so appealing to a lot of people.